Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this particular video, we'll be specifically looking into the very interesting problem in data streaming, which is counting the number of distinct elements in a given particular stream. Now for that, many naive algorithms are present. But obviously, if you talk about streaming data, we want everything efficient. Hence, in this particular video, we'll be looking the in and out of the very interesting and popular flagellate Martin algorithm. And before looking that, we'll be seeing this counting distinct element in a stream problem. What exactly it is? So, as the name suggests, it is the problem of finding the distinct element count in a given particular stream of data. Now, that data may contain repetition of certain elements. So, keeping those repetitions aside, we need to find the distinct, that is the unique elements from a given particular stream. Now, what is the use of finding the distinct elements? There are many uses, but few I have listed over here. The first use is regarding the IP addresses of packets passing through the router. So, there are many packets that are continuously getting passed through a router. So, some of the packets may be repeated or may be redundant. So finding the distinct of them is very important. Second, we can use it in finding the distinct patterns from the motifs in the DNA sequence. So again, in medical domain, it is very much important. And next, in technical domain, we can use it to find out the unique visitors to a particular app or website. So there might be any users who repeats the same websites many times. So because of which the owner of the website does not get the exact count of the unique visitors and hence there is a need to find the distinct. Now let's see a proper scenario that will provide you a clear idea that what exactly counting distinct element in a given stream means. So let's say we have a stream S of certain elements which contains repetitions and N is the total number of distinct element present in it. So you can see S contains certain elements x1, x2, x3, so on till xn. And we have the n, which is nothing but the variable which stores the set of all the distinct elements, for example, a1, a2, a3, and so on up to ak. Now, obviously, the count of k will be strictly less than or equal to the count of n. Because the total number of distinct elements in a given particular stream will always be less than or equal to the total number of elements present inside that particular stream. So here we have taken an example, stream S contains the elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 1, 3, 4, 1. Now you can clearly see that the element 1, 2, 3, 4 has got repeated more than once. And therefore, our N, which is nothing but the total number of distinct elements will be 1, 2, 3 and 4. Because these are the only unique elements present inside the entire variable S. And what is the length of N? It is 4 because there are total 4 distinct elements present inside the entire variable n. I hope the scenario is clear. Now, to solve this particular scenario, we have certain naive algorithms or solutions. I am going to explain one of the naive solution for it. So, let's have a look at the algorithm. So, we can set the counter to 0. We will be using this counter to iterate over all the elements inside the stream. Next, we will be defining a unique set which will be the list of all the distinct elements which we are going to extract from the entire streaming data. So now we will be using a loop. Here we are using a while loop and the condition will be, we will be iterating over all the elements until the counter reaches the last element index. And if the condition satisfies, we will check whether the current element which is pointed by the counter is present inside the unique set or not. If it is not present inside the unique set, that means it is unique or it has got traversed for the very first time and hence we will be adding that particular element inside the unique set. And likewise, we will be getting all the unique elements inside the unique set. Now after checking the condition and adding the element, we will be incrementing the counter. And note one thing that if the if condition doesn't satisfy, then no operation will be done. And this is how we will be getting all the distinct element inside the unique set. But we are interested in the total count of the unique elements. So for getting it, we will be calculating the length of the unique set. 
and the length function is going to give us the exact count of the total number of unique elements that are present in the unique set. Now obviously for calculating the length of the unique set, we will again require one loop to traverse through all the elements and incrementing the counter every time. So if you clearly observe in this particular algorithm, the algorithm might look simple but a huge space will be required for performing all the calculations. As you can see we are defining a unique set which is again an array. Let's say if one element is taking 20 bytes of space then what if the unique set contains crores of elements. Then in that case it will take a huge space which will reduce the efficiency and because of which the algorithm flagellate martin is introduced. So let's have an overview of this particular algorithm. So this particular algorithm is focused to find the approximate number of distinct elements in a stream. So note this word approximate. It is not going to give you the exact count of the total number of distinct element in a given stream. But as you know, it's very difficult to find the exact answer of any query which is fired on a given streaming data. And hence, the approximate count also matters a lot. And that too, this approximate count will be calculated with very less space. And it is going to be in a single pass. That means one single traversal is more than enough for finding the approximate count. Now, if you remember in the naive solution, we were using a unique set of array, which was storing all the elements, which are unique. Now, in this particular case, we do not require anything like that to store all the unique elements in a given set and because of which it uses very less memory while executing the operations. Hence, this particular algorithm is very much efficient and robust. Now you need to note one thing that this particular algorithm is meant to be used only when you have stream of data. That means you have huge and continuous generation of elements as well as it is expected that inside the entire stream the distinct element count is very very large. So in that case flagellate martin algorithm works the best. So I hope you have got an overview of this particular algorithm. So let's have a look at the pseudocode of how this algorithm is going to work. So this algorithm uses the concept of hash function. So we need to select a hash function h of x so that each element in the given set is mapped to a value which will take at least logarithmic space for storing that particular element. Now because of using the hash function concept, every element will be mapped to a very less space and which will increase the efficiency of the algorithm. Always remember that a good hash function will always provide better results. Now, once you are done with the conversion of all the elements into a hash output, the output is then converted into the binary value. That means whatever hash output you are getting, you just have to convert it into its binary form. So this is the second step. And once you get the binary form of the hash output of every element, you need to find the count of the total number of trailing zeros in that binary value. Trailing zeros means you need to start counting the zeros that are starting from the right hand side of a number and you need to move to left. You should count the zeros until you get 1. For example, if we have the value as 100, so if we start counting the number of zeros from the right hand side, so we have two zeros and after that we are getting a 1, so we should stop. So the total number of trailing zeros in the number 100 is 2. So I hope you understood the meaning of it. If it is still not clear, then we'll solve an example which will clear all your doubts. Now, after counting the trailing zeros in all the numbers, we need to find out the maximum of them. Whichever is the maximum, we need to store it in the variable capital R. And this R variable is what we were looking for. Now once you get this R variable, the approximate count of the total number of distinct elements present inside the stream will be 2 to the power this R variable. So if your R variable value is 4, then the approximate count of the distinct element will be 2 to the power 4, which will be 16. So I hope the pseudocode of this particular flagellate martin algorithm is clear. Now let's write the algorithm for this and see what are the tables and loops we require for calculating the approximate count of the distinct element using flagellate martin algorithm. So 
for sure we'll be requiring a counter variable which is going to iterate over all the values in the stream next we'll be requiring a max r variable which is going going to store the maximum of the count of trailing zeros from all the values in the stream now let's run the while loop and the condition will be that the while loop will run until and unless the counter variable reaches the last element index and if the condition satisfies the control will go inside the while loop and now inside this we need to find out first the hash output of every element so first we'll find out the hash output and then after finding the hash output we will find the binary form of it and the binary form will be stored inside the variable val note that this val variable will store the binary form of the hash output for every current element only and once we get the binary form of the hash output in the variable val then we need to find out the count of trailing zeros in the variable val so for finding the count of the trailing zeros we'll again require one loop which is going to traverse from the right hand side of that particular number and will count the trailing zeros so it will store the count of the trailing zeros in the variable count and if you remember we are concerned with finding the maximum of the count of trailing zeros that we have got from every element so we will check whether the count variable is greater than the max r variable initially the max r variable is zero so in the first case obviously the count variable will be greater so the control will go inside the if condition and the value inside the count variable will be stored in the max r variable and finally we'll get the maximum number of trailing zeros from all the elements inside the max r variable and once we get that max r variable we'll have to raise that max r variable to 2 so that can be performed with the help of 2 raised to max r and finally we'll get the approximate count of the distinct element present inside the stream so i hope the algorithm is clear now we'll see why we are using FM algorithm which is flagellate Martin algorithm. So if we compare the Nave algorithm with this FM algorithm, we can clearly see that inside the Nave algorithm we have the variable unique set which is going to store an array of all the distinct element. If, if each distinct element is taking a space of 20 bytes, then just imagine if the unique set contains lakhs of elements, then in that case the memory consumed will be 20 times the total number of distinct element present in a given stream. Now apart from this, once you are done with the unique set, you again have to find out the length of the unique set for which you again have to traverse through the entire set of elements which are present in the unique set which is going to take more time for performing those operations. And now if we jump to the FM algorithm, you can clearly see that we are not using any array variable which is not going to consume the extra memory that was consumed by the Nave algorithm and apart from that we are going to perform the entire operation with the use of only few 3 to 4 variables which is going to consume memory that is very much negligible when we compare it with the Nave algorithm. So now I hope that you have got a clear idea why I was saying that FM algorithm is better than any of the Nave algorithms. This is going to prove efficient as well as robust. So now let's have a look at an example. We will solve this example step by step according to the steps that are for the proper execution of the algorithm. So let's consider this particular stream. Now this stream contains the elements 1, 5, 10, 5, 15, 1. You can see that the element 1 and 5 has got repeated more than once. And let's consider a hash function h of x which is equal to x modulo 11. Now in the given problem we need to find out the count of the distinct or the unique elements by using the FM algorithm. So I hope the problem is clear. So let's start solving this particular problem step by step. So for calculating the approximate count of the distinct elements from this particular stream we will be requiring this six columns. Every column will have its own significance. The first column is x which is nothing but the elements present inside the stream. Next column is the hash output of that particular element x. Next is the binary form of the hash output. The next column consists of the count of the trailing zeros that were present inside the binary form. The next column will be 
consisting of the variable r which is nothing but the maximum of the count of the trailing zeros that we have got for each element in the previous column and the last column will be the distinct elements count which is calculated with the help of the formula 2 raised to r. So I hope the significance of each column is clear. So let's start with every element. So the first element is 1. The hash output for it will be 1 modulo 11 and that is nothing but 1. You just have to divide 11 from 1 and whatever remainder you are getting that will be the hash output. So in this particular case 1 is the remainder. Now after that we need to get the binary form of this hash output which is nothing but 1 only because the binary of 1 is 1. Now we need to count the number of trailing zeros present in the binary output. So you can clearly see that no trailing zeros are present in 1 hence we will write 0. So that was for the element 1. Similarly we need to calculate for all the elements inside the array. So the next element is 5. So the hash output of 5 will be 5 modulo 11 which is 5 itself. After that the binary form of 5 is 101. And you can clearly see that the count of the trailing zeros inside 101 is 0. There are no trailing zeros present. Now you can see that the next element is 10. So the hash output for 10 will be 10 modulo 11 which is nothing but 10. Now the binary form of 10 is 1010. So the count of the trailing zeros will be 1 because if we start from the right we get a single 0 and after that we are encountering with the value 1. So we will have to stop. So hence there is only one trailing 0. We will write the count as 1. Next element is 5. So the hash output for 5 will be 5 only and the binary of 5 is 101 and the count of the trailing zeros for 5 will be 0. The next element is 15. The hash output for 15 will be 15 modulo 11. In this case it will be 4 because if we divide 11 from 15 we will get the remainder 4. Now we need to convert the binary form of this 4 which is nothing but 100. Zero zero. So if you count the number of trailing zeros from the end, we will get 2 as the answer because there are 2 consecutive zeros. So we will write 2 in the count of trailing 0. Next element is 1. So for the element 1, we already have calculated the all the output. So let's write the same. 1 modulo 11 will be 1. Binary of 1 is 1 and the count of trailing zeros in 1 is 0. So we are done with the computation of all the count of the trailing zeros in each and every element. So once we have found out the count of trailing zeros for each element, we need to find out the maximum of it and we need to store it in the variable r. Maximum of all of this count of trailing zeros is 2. Next column is the approximate count of the distinct element which is calculated with the formula 2 to the power r. Here r is 2. So 2 to the power 2 gives us the answer 4. So you can see in the array the element 1, 5, 10 and 15 are only distinct. So in this particular scenario we have got the exact answer of the distinct elements that are present inside the stream which is 4. There might be a case that you might get an approximate answer of the count of distinct element in the given stream. So that is how the flagellate martin algorithm works because of its efficiency it is accepted. So I hope the example is clear. So if you guys have any single doubt or any questions then you can straight away put it in the comment section. I will be very much happy to solve that. And apart from that for more such videos do like share and subscribe to my channel also hit the bell icon and don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a good day ahead.